No, do tell us in all seriousness, why this drop off suddenly after three years of booming Swiss watch sales? What you have to look at is, is a long, long term trend. And if you look at the watch industry or the luxury industry in general since the 1980s has been booming, and uh, I'm convinced that this trend will continue. Of course, you have a bumpy road right now. You have um, political uh, instability. You have inflation in many countries. Um, and all this impacts what we call the consumer sentiment. So some people, especially, I, I would say, in the entrance luxury price point, are postponing their purchases. What is interesting to see, though, that the high luxury, the really expensive pieces, are doing uh, extremely well. Extremely well. Well, your strategy over the last seven years has been working really, really well. So you tell us, what does a Breitling, with you in charge, do at a time like this? Do you lean into the very high end? Um, you're right. We have been doing very well, but it's a pack package of, uh, of elements which make a brand more successful than others. Because in a crisis, what you need to do is to overperform the market. So be better than competition. And it's better products, nicer products, better marketing, communication, you know, being closer to the, to the consumer through our boutiques, for instance. And this is why, uh, you know, we outperform the market. So what does that mean if a d retailer decides to discount? Do you have any control over that? Do you want your brand associated with discounting? Is it fine? Uh, no, it's not fine. Mm. We, no, no brand wants to, to have its, its product uh, discounted. Thank God we don't have that problem, especially the secondary market is much more structured, what we call certified pre-owned. You have much less what we call gray market, people selling watches because they need cash. So I think the market is much more structured. And um, no, I think we are a strong brand as a retailers respect our pricing policy. So obviously you mentioned China, you know, the weaker demand from China has been pretty much a big drag. When do you see China luxury demand coming back? Given that we saw better than expected growth, but it does Listen, seem that the economy is not... I think nobody in the luxury, we're we nowhere in China. It's 1.6 billion country. Uh, there are only two or three hundred million people in that country who have access right now uh, to, to, to the luxury products. I just came back from China. If you look at the second tier cities, third tier cities, uh, cities you've never heard about it with 10 million inhabitants, mm. the potential is huge. Again, you know, the market will grow in the future and sometimes there will be some dips. But the potential also in India and in so many countries is phenomenal. Are you seeing it as a bit of a land grab opportunity then right now? Is that why you're just back from China? Yes, yes. And I'm flying tomorrow to India. So <laughs> there, there are countries with, uh, with phenomenal uh, potential. Yeah. Uh, what about the United States? Because I imagine in the past you've depended on, you know, the, the wealthy bankers and the billionaires of the United States. How are they doing? What are they liking at the moment? What price um, point? The U.S. Is, is doing fine. You have this problem in the U.S. Uh, because of the interest rates, in, in particular for housing. And you know they have flexible interest rates and they have been raising. And I think that's a big uh, problem. I hope that the interest rates in the U.S. will go back very soon and this will help. And we as a Swiss company producing a Swiss franc, obviously we have a problem because the Swiss franc became so strong. So whatever we gain in the U.S., we might lose a portion of it because we obviously report in Swiss francs. Exactly, and you're obviously looking at what the Federal Reserve does just as much as everybody else. So when the market drops like it has for the last six days in the United States, does that concern you? Indeed, we see also that there's a correlation between the market development and the consumption in, in luxury goods. Sure. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm still positive. I'm yep. still positive. Talk to us about your quartz uh, inclusion because it wasn't something that Breitling typically did much of and it seems to be a bit more popular now. Is it because it's popular with the consumer? Yes, we want to be approachable as a brand. Um, you, when we talk about exclusivity, of course we talk about pricing, we talk about accessibility of the product, but intellectually, especially our sponsorship, our partnerships are all approachable. We're not involved in tennis. We're in surfing, for instance, mm. with Kelly Slater. We are in triathlon. We, we try to be approachable as a brand. Uh, but of course, we remain exclusive because of our distribution and the price. But those are also very adventurous and sort of extreme type sports, right? That must be a little bit of a, a, a strategy, too. Absolutely, especially after this COVID area where people are searching for freedom, uh, carpe diem, enjoying life, and all these sports give that, and the society changed a lot since COVID. Where are you spending your marketing dollars? Facebook, 
Instagram, what's the new place to spend it? Indeed, we spend nearly 70% uh, of our marketing dollars in social media because it's there where people make their choice. It's where customers uh, get the information. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that they buy um, online or through e-com. They buy in boutiques. So they get the information online, but they want the physical experience of the brand. And this is very different. The pre-owned market has dropped off quite substantially. If that's the case, then what would you want to have as the price point that you sell at? How do you attract people who know that this is not maybe something that they'll resell in the future? After COVID, everything boomed. Mm. And I think in, in both in the primary market and the secondary, secondary market, the market has normalized. Let's not forget that we are far ahead of pre-COVID. Pre of course, uh, some brands suffered since uh, last year, but, but the, the year after COVID was totally, uh, absolutely not normal, and the market normalized. Also, the, the certified pre-owned market now decreased a little bit, but is still at a very high level and has been normalizing. So we, should, we shouldn't compare it to the post-COVID year, but we should co um, compare it to the year before COVID, and here, we, the whole industry is doing very well. I'm a VP at Goldman Sachs. We didn't do too badly last year. What's the watch that I pick out of Breitling? For instance, this one, it's a tourbillon. No, uh... no you told me that was $25,000 worth. Yeah, but really? you're, you're at Goldman Sachs. You can afford it. <laughs> okay. What is the most popular watch right now? It's in the a market? Navi timer. It's obviously the Navi timer line, which is our iconic product. And we just launched uh, the 41 uh, millimeter GMT and automatic, and it's been doing very well. Any plans for a smartwatch? No. <laughs>